Hi, I'm Nick Handmaker, and I am here to show you how to install Windows XP. First thing you'll need to do to install Windows XP is to make sure your computer is set to boot off of the CD drive. So here I am in my BIOS, and I'm going to go over to boot, and I'm going to change CD drive to the very top. Then I'm going to exit saving changes, hit yes. Whenever it reboots, your computer may ask you to press a key to boot off of the CD and the drive. If it does, press any key on your keyboard to continue booting. This first part of Windows Setup, it is loading a bunch of drivers and system files into memory to start the Windows Setup. This may take a couple of minutes. Once Windows Setup has loaded, it'll give you a couple of options. It'll say to set up Windows XP, press Enter. To repair, plus, eh, press R. And to quit, press F3. We're going to set up Windows, so we're going to press Enter. Then it'll have the licensing agreement. Go ahead and read that using page up and page down to uh, get to the next part of the agreement. Once you're done reading that, go ahead and press F8 to agree. Now, I'm installing XP on a blank 20 gigabyte hard drive, and so mine shows up on partition space. You can select a partition you've already created beforehand, or if you're installing on a brand new hard drive, yours will show up the same. You can just press enter. Now you can format the drive in NTFS or FAT. The difference is that NTFS allows files larger than 4 gigabytes. FAT is more compatible with other operating systems such as Linux and Mac OS. For the sake of this, since we're only installing Windows, I'm going to format NTFS. Now, I don't want it to take forever in a day, even though 20 gigabytes isn't that big, so I recommend doing the quick format. So I'll go ahead and select that one and press Enter, and Setup will format the drive. It has formatted the drive. It'll check your disk for errors, and if it doesn't find any, which it shouldn't since it's just formatted it, it will start copying files from the CD to the hard drive. This will take um, several minutes, probably about 5 to 10 minutes, depending on the speed of your hard drive and the speed of your CD-ROM or DVD-ROM drive. After Windows XP is done copying files to your hard drive, it'll want to reboot your computer. You can either wait the 15 seconds or press Enter and your computer will reboot. This time do not press any key to boot from the CD. Instead wait and then Windows XP will start booting. When Windows boots, it will start the graphical installer where it will ask a couple of questions, and I'll highlight those as they come up. The first question Windows XP will ask you is for regional and language options. Since I am in the United States and I speak English, I don't need to customize that, and I'm using a US keyboard, so I don't need to change that. So I hit next. Then you type in your name and organization. Hit next. This is where you type in your product key. 
Once you type in your product key, hit next. Once you type in your product key, then it'll want a computer name. Normally I like to make this the make and model of the computer. Like if it's a Dell Dimension 4160, then I'll name the computer Dimension 4160, all caps. This is going to be a test machine, so I'm going to name it Test123. Also, you can type in the administrator password. This is highly recommended. And type it again. Then hit next. Then select your date and time, if it's not already correct, and select your time zone. I'm in Eastern Time, so I'll select that and leave the automatically adjust clock for daylight savings checked. Hit next. The next question Windows XP will ask you is whether to use typical or custom network settings. Since this isn't going to be a server or anything special, I'm just going to go with typical settings so as that it can use DHCP to figure out my IP address and other networking information it needs. So go ahead and hit next. Then it'll want to make your computer either part of a domain, if you're on a more corporate environment, or if you're in a home, then probably just a work group. The work can be named anything. I recommend keeping it the same name that other computers are. Or if it's the first computer, you can name it anything and then change all the other computers to that. Work group works just fine for this computer. So I'll hit next. When the graphical setup of Windows is done, it will reboot your computer. Again, ignore the message, press any key to boot from the CD, and let it boot up from the hard drive on its own. Windows will start to boot. When Windows boots, it will want to improve the appearance of visual elements. Go ahead and click OK. Windows will change your resolution. Go ahead and click OK if it looks correct, or press Escape if it does not. At this point, Windows will ask a couple of questions. Go ahead and click Next. Go ahead and check the Help Protect My PC by turning on Automatic Updates Now. And click Next. Then Windows will check for internet connection. My computer connects directly to the internet, so I'm going to select no. If your computer connects through a local area network or home network, go ahead and keep yes clicked. Click next. Then, if it has an internet connection that it detects, it will ask you to activate Windows. You can go ahead and choose to activate Windows now, or you can activate it once it boots up. Then the next screen, and the last one, which is what I'm on now, is the Ready to Register with Microsoft. Since this is just a demo, I'm going to say no, but you should probably say yes. Go ahead and click Next. Then it wants you to set up users. Go ahead and type in the users that you want. I just want one. I just want one myself. Click next. And then it says thank you. Click finish. The 
questionnaire will disappear and Windows will log on for the first time. Congratulations, you have successfully installed Windows. Now you can install drivers, antivirus, anti-spyware, and any other favorite programs that you enjoy using in Windows. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please look out for some of my other tutorials on installing Ubuntu Linux 8.04 and installing Windows Vista. Thanks for watching.